In the last video, we learned about creating a new project using Visual Studio Code. We explored creating an app bar, setting its background color, and creating a new text widget with customized styling. In this video, our focus will be on creating a new custom widget and ensuring its reusability. First, we wrap the text widget with a container widget. The container widget is a rectangular box that can be customized with properties such as color, alignment, padding, margin, border, and more. After wrapping the text widget, we encountered an error. We need to remove the const keyword from this context. Then, we add a color property to the container and refresh the app. Container and text widget are now displayed correctly. Next, we'll combine these widgets into a single custom widget. To do this, we create a new class below this code. When typing st, Flutter provides some suggestions, and we select the Flutter stateless widget. We'll focus on stateful widgets in later tutorials. Give a name to our custom widget. In the constructor, we also change the name. We'll cover the use of the constructor in a couple of minutes. For now, let's cut the container and text widget part and paste it into the custom widget's return statement. Next, copy the custom widget's name and paste it into the main function. Remember, the parentheses are necessary. Finally, run the app. Same display as seen earlier, but now we're using it as a custom widget. Next, We'll learn how to make this custom widget reusable throughout our projects. First, we'll make the container color dynamic, and also allow the text and its color to be changeable for different uses. To achieve this, we'll declare three variables. Let's start by declaring a string variable for the text value. If you need help with declaring variables, I've done another video in the Dart language tutorial section where I explain this process. Use the text variable in place of the hard-coded text. Next, create a color type variable for the container color and replace the hard-coded color value with this variable. Similarly, create another variable for the text color. Then, Pass these variables in the constructor using named parameters enclosed in curly brackets. Mark them as required so that these parameters must be provided. Finally, use this dot text variable to set the text value.
Then, pass the container color and text color variables along with the text variable when calling the widget. In the place where you call the widget, you can add the required arguments manually or use the suggestions provided. First, add the required argument for text, then the container color, and finally the text color. Pass any text for displaying along with a color for the container and another color for the text. Finally, run the app to see the changes. It is possible to call the custom widget multiple times in this file. To do this, we wrap the custom widget with a column widget for using multiple widgets. Inside the column widget, we use the children parameter to add many widgets. We separate each widget with a comma. We can copy our custom widget and use it with another text and different colors. After pasting below the first widget and adding a comma, we change the text accordingly. Then change the container color and text color for the second custom widget as desired. After making these changes, run the app again. Both custom widgets will be displayed with the updated colors. By adding a column property for alignment, such as main axis alignment dot center, the widgets will align in the center. If any changes are needed, they can be made once in the custom widget. For example, changing the font size will apply to all instances of the widget. Perfect! Then we make this custom widget more reusable and usable in any part of the project. For that, we create a new Dart file in the lib folder.
give a name to the file and then cut our custom widget and paste it into the new file. We need to import the material.dart package. Then, we need to import our new file into the main file to resolve these errors. Save the files. Now, we can use our custom widget in any part of the project by simply importing the new file. Run the app to confirm that we get the same result. Great! In the next video, we'll dive into creating buttons and handling their events. This will allow us to add interactivity to our app, enabling users to interact with the UI elements we've created so far. Looking forward to it. Thank you for watching.